Hey guys, Too Legit City here. Today we're going to be talking about a hatch ranch design that I use to increase food calories. And today we're going to be going over my hatch ranch. Of course, we are using a vertical hatch ranch design right here. We have another video talking about how the vertical ranch works. In most cases, it's just a 96 tile room that's built up vertically so that we minimize the travel distance. Now, the thing we're going to focus on is really just the incubator setup with the evolution chamber so that we get the calories a little bit faster. We talked about the incubators on the automation on another video as well. They go over very quickly. We have one at 10% activation time, 50% duration, 15% activation time, and then 15% duration, and also 20%, 15%. You can see that we split up the activation times by 5% on each sensor so that we could have one come and then another and then another that way we don't have all of them on for longer so that we stagger the visits now of course the reason why for the incubators is because if you have an incubator and you set up your breeding room auto wrangle critter drop off to priority nine anytime they're hatched they will check that room to see if they're at the limit if they're not they're gonna actually grab the critter and to the evolution chamber that we have right here and usually if my dupes are actually busy this is actually set up to be okay for the critter to become an adult to have it dropped off manually in which case our critter drop mechanism right here will force the critter to fall down vertically to the water tile. Now there's also the normal hatches right here on the eggs. We don't have enough incubators. They're just gonna sit on the tile and we're gonna showcase how the critter drop works. It's simple automation, but there's the hatch. They're gonna walk into the tile, door is going to close and they will fall down into the water tank in which they will evolve manually. And our auto sweeper will pick up the final evolution and deliver it to the kitchen. So there's going to be three ways of the evolution. There is the egg hatch drop, the critter in the incubator drop, and then the manual drop if the rancher has time to actually to pick up the baby and manually evolve the critter in this chamber. Now, of course, to go over very quickly, the critter sensors are very simple. All of them are the same way, and it's just a quick automation line to the door. The critter sensor is only on critters and it's above zero. This means that when there is a critter in the room, the door is open and when the critter goes into the door, they're not in the room, which forces the door to close and then they will fall down vertically. If you do not close the door on the critter, they will stay on top of the door as if it's a normal tile. So you have to close the door on them to force them to fall down. Now. The door shenanigans right here looks a little bit weird. It's just to keep it so that the critter walks into the specific door, not past it, and then immediately falls down on those specific tiles. The uh, evolution box, let's talk about that. So the trick for this, you guys might notice that our critter drop off is not flooded, despite it actually, you know, filled with water. And the trick for this is actually pretty funny. Going over to the liquid overlay, we have two layers of liquids. And what we're doing for that is we put a drop of salt water on the ground, and then we put another drop of water on top. This allows the bottom layer of liquid to expand to the full tile, allowing you to evolve critters with a low amount of liquid and to prevent the critter drop off from being flooded. This allows your duplicates to manually drop off critters here and we will showcase how that looks like in a second. Our rancher is going to be moving the uh, freshly hatched baby critter into the evolution chamber. So Bindi's going to go over to here. As you can see, they're still able to use the critter drop off. And the moment the baby is released, they are evolving just like that. I have the doors in a setup like this specifically because of the vertical drop. And then you also want to have your critter drop off in a separate room so that the max critter doesn't actually bop you. If you actually have this without the doors, you might run into the issue that there's too many critters and you can't use the drop off because of that. Because there is a limit to the drop offs. You want to separate the rooms with that. If you guys are wondering about the rails, 
This is a simple rail design that takes the eggs from this room all the way to here so that the sweepers could sweep to it. This goes into my kitchen. Another takeaway is going to be that incubators require a sweeper on the left tile in order to deliver the egg. If you do not touch the left tile specifically, the sweepers will not be able to deliver the egg. And because of that, we cannot have the same pattern on the left side as the tile here blocks us from reaching the top left incubator, but we are able to have one on the same level and at the lower level if we were to have it on the left. At the same time, you could also repeat this vertically to use the same tile drop if you guys would like. But that has been my hatch wrench design with the evolution chamber and the simple incubator automation with the optional critter drops. Now, normally I have my critter drop off here at priority one, meaning that they will only take to this critter drop off if they're done with their other ranching duties. So grooming, shearing, making sure everyone is brushed and happy before they will actually forcefully evolve the babies. So because of that, we have some fail saves and if they are too busy or I don't have enough ranchers, there are ways for this to take care of itself. But guys, if you guys have any questions about the design, please leave a comment down below. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. And of course guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you guys.